The number one thing that I'm getting lately is how do I read a defense? How do I read the pass game? Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. And I know my videos kind of help with some of that because I speak out what I'm looking at, but I'm going to make a deep dive video right now into the easiest way to see the field from a quarterback's perspective. Let's dive in. A coach that I had once explained this to me and it was like a light bulb went off. The defense only has 11 people in the field. Yeah, no sh but they can only do so many different things. They can only be in so many different coverages and they can only cover so many parts of the field. So let's start with the basics. The typical defense has four rushers. Like right here, you see four down linemen. If they bring four people, that means that there is going to be seven people in coverage. So at the snap, look to see how many people are rushing off the get-go. But you're not looking at the D-line, you're looking at the second level defenders, the linebackers, the nickels, the safeties. Does anybody else come besides those four? I take the ball, drop back, nobody comes, that's fine get over the ball. The next level of this is how many people are deep defenders? How many people are underneath defenders? So if they bring four, they can do a few different things. They can have three deep, four under, so three deep zones, four underneath coverages, which is hooks and curl flats. They can do two deep, five under, so like cover two, two deep zones, five underneath coverages, so flats, hook, hook, hook flat. They could also do four deep, three under, cover four, four deep zones, three hook defenders slash buzz flats. So the way that I look at this is just geometry. There's open space and it's a numbers game right here. They're rushing four. They're dropping four under and they have three deep defenders. Simple as that, right? Now let's get into a new play. All right, now let's go get into like this slot two buck. We're gonna put the defense in Tampa two. So this would be essentially two deep, five under is how we're calling this. Meaning when they're only rushing four people, that's the standard that four D linemen are rushing. There's two levels of zones. There's deep zones and there's underneath zones. In two deep, there's five underneath, two deep. So we're gonna see how this plays out. And again, also knowing that these Mike linebackers in Tampa two will vacate, they will get out a little bit deeper than the regular cover two. So there's some nuances to coverage, but right here, I'm seeing the shell. I'm expecting, okay, they're only rushing four as long as none of these linebackers come in blitz. There's gonna be five underneath defenders, two deep defenders. And so you know the zones that they have to get to. Same thing. In cover three and in cover two, the soft spots are right over the ball. Now let's get into a play that everybody runs, four verts. And now, so we've done cover two, we've done cover three. And let's see what happens when they go three blitz. They have four linemen on the ball. This linebacker over number 74, he's gonna be blitzing. If I did not know that though, say I snap the ball and I see him start to blitz, okay, immediately in my mind, the safety, there's one deep safety. They're playing zone underneath because they're not matching based on eyes. Okay, it's gonna be three deep, three under. When you say three deep, three under in a quarterback room, you know that somebody's blitzing. It's an addition by subtraction type of game. So right here, three deep, three under, I got the seam. And so as you start playing this number game, you can almost drop back and know where people are gonna end up. If someone tells me that they're blitzing someone and playing cover three, then I know that there's only three underneath defenders in zones, meaning that the windows get a lot bigger, but I have to block for a little bit longer. So let's see with a different route concept. I know that the soft spots are gonna be in the seams. I know the soft spots are probably gonna be in the flats because they don't have enough defenders zone-wise to play sound defense. So like right here, soft spot in the flat. And so like, instead of seeing the entire field and seeing what everybody's doing on every route, if you're playing the game of odds, you know that, okay, if they're blitzing five, there's gotta be more space somewhere else. What type of shell are they running when they blitz five? Are they having two deep defenders? Meaning they're probably gonna play some sort of trap two, cover two with like trap corners, trying to stop you from throwing quick plays of the flats. Let's get into another play. And we'll run jet pool shallow. Let's go quarters. This is essentially four deep, three under, four man rush. Where are they gonna be soft? Probably quick out routes in this type of shell you can tell by how there's kind of like a rounded like shell over the top the corners are not so tight to the line of scrimmage that tells you that it's more of a cover four look pre-snap as long as they're aligning to where they need to be if they're not like trying to fake their alignment so i'm gonna look to my gimmies get my out routes knowing that their responsibilities on the outside are deep first then underneath and with how they're aligned this right outside linebacker his responsibility is to get to the hook and the flat in the same exact coverage pre-snap i'm just looking every single play where are they aligned and where are the gimme throws like every single time i will take three, four, five yards every single time in Madden. And that's why I typically win most of the games that I play. So we know there's three deep, four under, there's four deep, three under, there's two deep, five under, like cover two, and you have a few other variations. Let's get into some nickel defense where they can blitz a little bit. This nickel two trap is essentially, it's kind of cover two-ish, but it's a little different. They have four down linemen and somebody else is blitzing. Probably the guy over top of number four. He's pressed. And if he's not coming, then I think the linebacker over Kelsey is gonna come. So we're just gonna drop back and see where does this extra pressure come from. 
comes from the field. We'll take our four yards. So we'll run it again. He's coming from the field. And look, what you would typically think is, okay, let me try to throw the ball where they're blitzing from. So that's what this defense is meant to stop. They're gonna have a trap corner like number seven right there in real football. His responsibility as a trap corner is to come and replace where that blitzer's leaving from. So we should not be able to throw a bubble route. So that's something like the soundness of this. But again, they're blitzing five people now. So how many people can they have in coverage? Six. And if they have two deep zone defenders, that means that they have four people underneath to cover the whole second level of the field. There's a lot of open space there. It's hard. There's a lot of open space in the gaps. So as long as you have a plan and you understand what you're seeing pre-snap, then you have a chance. We'll get into this last little nuanced detail of this coverage-wise when it comes to man coverage before we get into playing these games. Same thing with man. We're going to go with this cover one hole here. So in man coverage, there's a few different types. There's one high man and there's two high man. And then there's cover zero. But in one high man, you know that either someone's blitzing. So cover 11B blitzing, like 11 is cover one out of nickel. So they're going to be blitzing, meaning there's five man defenders. There's five rushers and one deep safety. If they're blitzing you, in theory, they need to be playing inside leverage because they cannot let up a cross face in breaker when they don't have a plug defender or a robber. So the guy that's going to be blitzing, if he's not blitzing, he's going to be playing robber. So he's going to be playing that zone, that hook zone in the middle of the field. And how these players are taught is if there's a plugger or a robber, whether it's sort of safety coming down robbing or a linebacker playing plug, they're playing in the same exact zone, just different terminology for the same thing. Then the man defender is going to be playing outside leverage knowing they have help inside they're going to try to funnel to him when you know that you're playing against one high man all you have to see is what does that extra defender do is he blitzing okay cool i should get an inbreaker they should essentially stop the inbreaker but if we cross face we have a lot of room to run if he stays in the plug they're only rushing four players now so i got a little bit more time to let my man routes win what you don't want versus man is routes that stop so I'm gonna put these hooks on in breakers and drags and you're basically trying to out leverage. So like right here, Fred Warner, I'm gonna see what is he doing? He's gonna end up being the plugger. I wanna see, does he move right or left? If he moves to the right, I'm gonna try to hit rice. If he moves to the left, I'm gonna try to work one of these man beaters on the right. So he goes, stays in the middle of the field. We're gonna take the drag. He was gonna take away the slant. We're gonna take the underneath. It's kind of like a cat and mouse game. So same thing here. How you can start messing with these guys is if you put four to a side, you can influence this plug defender to go one way. So you see a lot of teams when they know it's man, they go and they run this four to one side to get the plug defender to push to that side. So you get a one-on-one -on -one to X over here on the left. Like right here, see he pushed, now we got him. So there's a lot of different ways to manipulate it. And we'll do one more version of man before we hop into a game. You have cover one plug, you have cover one B where the guy's blitzing instead of plugging. And then the other is two man. And two man can get really tough if you don't have a quarterback that can scramble. Identifying coverages. They have five man defenders. They have two deep defenders. They have four rushers. It's just a, it's a math game. And the whole premise of playing two man is that you are going to have your DBs playing inside leverage. Look at them across the board. The guy for Tony, guy for MVS, guy for Rice. Madden has them playing inside leverage because their whole job is to funnel people to the safeties play underneath trail and not let them win like right here i'm looking if i know it's two man for where is my out leverage defender right here it's actually going to be fred warner we have an outbreaker versus two man like this play right here is a great two man beater we have a corner because we know that he's playing inside leverage it's really hard to get cross face plays versus this and we have something that's going to take out the safety so like right here pre-snap oh two man okay we got travis kelsey on fred warner inside leverage because they're playing two man we got to get this runaway play and see if we can layer it to the sideline. So that's like my whole pre-snap thought. Got him, good leverage, runaway play. And so like you see a lot of sale concepts, outbreakers, a lot of whips, all these different things that end up breaking out versus two man because that gives you your best chance to win. I know it can be confusing and this is one of those videos that like if you listen to it 10 times in a row, you probably have a better chance of it sinking in because that's how I had to learn when I first got to the league. When all of this was new information to me because we didn't really talk about coverages in college, it was very much like just understanding spacing. It took me time and time and time and time again just to like re-listen to it, re-hear it a few different ways and then it eventually sunk in and then I realized like, look, there's only 11 people on defense Defense. They can only cover so many different spaces and all of our plays on offense are designed to attack different spaces. Let's get into it. We're going to grab the Chiefs because I love using Hot Route Master and we're going to go into a few of these games and see if I can speak through what I'm seeing pre-snap, find the open spaces and get this all dialed in. All right. So first things first, what I like to do in most of the games that I play, I like to get into empty because empty makes them declare spatially and where people are weak. So like right here, they have two deep, but it looks like it's going to be some sort of quarters actually. And where do I like my mismatch? Just playing geometry. I like right 
Rice right here on Fred Warner. I like him to run a regular seam, might get it back shoulder. And I know that if Fred Warner's gonna take away Rice, that all Kelsey has to do is cross face on this defender over top of him, and then he's gonna get into that void. So we're gonna go A to Y. A to Y. So like, I don't really look at the whole field. I just look at the key spaces on the field that I need to see, and it cleans up the picture. All right, look, he's in the same coverage. A to Y. We're gonna do the same thing until he fixes it. A to Y. Like, adjust. I go hurry up a lot because he typically calls the same thing. He's not gonna adjust. Look, now he adjusts. Okay, so now look. Kelsey's not gonna be open on a slant, but what might he be open on? A seam. What might Rice be open on? A seam. What might Tony be open on? A corner. And Marquez put me on an under because I like runaways. So I'm gonna go A to RB to B. And right here, we got A in the back shoulder. Get down. Little close one, a little bit better back shoulder. Like this is how I start playing these games. Cover three is really hard to beat down low because there's not so many spaces that they can get beat vertically. You wanna hit the seams, you wanna hit the flats, but everything's tighter. So like right here, I love this right here. We're gonna put Tony on a corner. We're gonna put Quez on a regular out route. We're gonna put Rice on a seam. And then we're gonna put Kelsey on a corner. We're gonna move Rice out if we can, just a little bit. No, we can't. Okay, we're gonna go A to RB to Y. I think we can back shoulder this seam here. Nope, nope, nope. We're gonna check it down to B. Ooh, we had him. We had B. They feel like they're comfortable in cover three. I'm gonna make them uncomfortable in cover three. Cover three beater down here. My favorite play of all time. Here we go, red zone scissors. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stress the flat right now at Travis Kelsey, get out of there. And we're gonna hit this corner route because the flats are gonna be declared. I like it. Now we're fourth and goal. We're gonna get back on the ball, knowing they're liking to play cover three here. We're gonna run the ball. Now they're adjusting to go too high. Quick little motion, snap it. So basically like the spaces are the same thing. You can manipulate him with motion like we did on the scissors route, make him declare earlier to open up the space. But like how I play offense, especially in Madden, is I try to get people in the right spaces and manipulate coverage with underneath routes, with vertical routes. And I find different ways to attack the same part of the field. So where Pacheco called his corner route is the same spot that we've been catching seams for the most part. It's just a little bit wider because it's to the boundary. When you start knowing how many people are rushing, you know how many people are playing zones and you can just manipulate different ways to present attacking the same space. What's our theme? Find the open space versus zone. If it's man, beat man coverage. It's simple. Right here, I feel like they're in two man. They look like they're in some sort of man. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna put Kelsey on a corner and then I'm gonna motion just to verify. If the inside guys look like they're playing man, the outside guys don't look like it. All right, now they're in zone. Now we know they're in zone. Put Kelsey on a seam. I like the influence on this left side. No way, that was a, dude, that, he crazy hops. We had a wide open guy. So they were man aligned, ended up going zone. We knew it was zoned by motioning over. So now we know, look, he's gonna try to find a way to stay in cover three this whole time. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think he's gonna go and play man. He's had success with cover three. So we gotta start taking our easy ones over the ball. Let's see if we can get Kelsey on this. We're gonna go Y to A, B. Got him. And that's the open space. We're going to find the open space. Since they're playing cover three so heavily, the only way to beat it, in my opinion, with the range that their guys have, and that's why they play a lot of cover three, even in real life, is like they have some tall ass linebackers. They have length. They can go up and get it. You got to beat them by being able to run the ball. Look, like right here, we should have a gash. We should have a gash in the run game. All right. Back on the ball, 36 seconds. We'll be ready for our timeout on the next play. We're gonna run the ball again here too, by the way. We're not afraid to run the ball in two minutes. We right at the snap, he went and engaged. That was a good play by him. Kelsey on the corner, I like this. Give me Tony on the seam. Like right here, I think they're going zero. We're gonna motion this guy out to confirm it. We got him, got him. Now they're getting out of it. Now we got Kelsey. Now we got Kelsey. Nope, we got RB in the flat. Get out of bounds. Nice. 15 seconds. We still have a timeout. Got them right where we want them. Let's see if we can keep on influencing them. They're trying to disguise, trying to do all this stuff. We know where the open spaces are. Now they're going to have to adjust. Give me Marquez in the seam. Give me Tony on that up right there. All right, we're going to go A to X to Y. RB, actually. They let me have the flats. We're going to take the flats. What do we say? We know where they're susceptible in this 3D that they're like running to the flats. They're not getting there. We're going to keep abusing it. They're going to have to adjust too. So when they adjust, we're going to be ready to take advantage of it. The only way to adjust when you're in this base look is either going to be playing man or you're going to go cover two. So like knowing how they're going to counter what I'm beating them with, but now they're going to adjust. Now we have a great opportunity here on Rice with a corner. We got a great opportunity with Kelsey in the corner. See who gets better leverage on the guy over top of them. Nope. We're going to take RB in the flat. 
fine. Now we have two plays from the two yard line and a timeout. What I'm thinking here is look, we're gonna get ready to run an inside zone. We're gonna doctor this up though. We're gonna act like we're gonna pass it. We're gonna motion them out. Yep, then we're gonna motion them back in. Now we're gonna get to a run play. We're gonna get in the box. There we go. When they're playing cover three, you have to be willing to take the flats and you have to be willing to run the ball. If they're going to base line, do any of this other stuff, like they ended up going zero there, but they weren't aggressive about it. They were not crowding the line of scrimmage. You got to be willing to run the ball. And I will run the ball at any point in the game. I will run it in two minutes. I will run it on last few plays of the half. But same philosophy, like there's open spaces to be had. See the shell of the defense, see the structure, confirm it at the snap of the ball, how many people are blitzing and how many people could be available in coverage. Then you see the shell and you just rinse repeat that over and over and over and over and over again. Oh my God, just got ran down. Here we go. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Red zone offense. What do we say about red zone offense? It's tighter down here. Like it is not easy to score down here. You have to be able to run the ball inside the tent. Like right here, dude, I'm telling you right now, we are going to run this ball to the left side because there is a one technique. That is the D tackle on the left side of the center that is considered a one technique. The guy on the right, right over 65, that other D tackle, he's a three technique. It's easy to run and gain ground and to get leverage on these guys when you're running to a one technique, especially when they're running his own scheme in my opinion so we're gonna run this bitch and we're gonna get it anytime you have an inside zone or outside zone really too like unless you're planning on cutting it back early you want to be running towards a one technique three techniques in my opinion are reserved for like when you want to run trap when you want to run like counters i think can cut back well against those also you have to know where the linebackers alignment is because if you can get a one technique and capture the linebacker you are set to be able to run the ball and i, I will say like the whole philosophy with the open spaces the geometry of the defenses in zone i know we're talking about it in a passing sense but you have got to be willing to run the ball when there just aren't easy spaces to be had you have to open up those easy spaces for yourself by having those linebackers scoot up having them have to press guys like because if they're going to play off cover three you can go up and down the field and throw flats all day long but you can also just run the ball in the box that's all we got to do ah out of bounds Ooh, too late on the throw and now he's out. Man, that's tough. But 21-7, to 7, we definitely would have had his ass, especially in the past game. It's a game of numbers. There's zones. There's only so many spots players can get to. And there's different routes in different timing of the routes that get to the same spots. And if you're having a hard time seeing it, spread it out and go empty. Like that's the easiest way to see it. If you're having a hard time getting open spaces with that, then go trips with a running back offset. That way your default can be, hey, we're gonna go inside zone here. If they're covering everything, we should be able to get four yards of pop. And you just play that back and forth game between inside zone, throwing seams, throwing flat routes. There's only so many ways to stop it. And if you're patient, you can take advantage of it. But if you guys like that video, if you like more videos like this that get into like kind of how I see the game, how I break it down and try to make it as easy as possible to see for anybody that wants to play quarterback, definitely hit like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you guys want to see next.